as far as the influence is concerned first of all it exhibits more concern for social superiority rather than the ritual superiority or ritual purity i told you previously a caste can become a dominant caste if it belongs to either the higher caste or the intermediate caste if a caste belongs to lower caste or lower level then people won't accept say so let us assume a condition in which an intermediary caste is a dominant caste as far as ritual status is concerned that means as per the ranking which was mentioned in the vedas or as per the ancient scriptures even though it belongs to intermediary level it gives more concern to its social superiority that means in different aspects of the society they are more influence they are most influential i will explain you with one example whenever the people are organizing one village festival then the brahmins have to approach that dominant caste first otherwise it will become difficult for the organizers to organize that village festival because they have to be given recognition because they are socially superior even though they are not so ritually they exhibit more concern for social superiority rather than the ritual superiority if you go to punjab the brahmins are considered as menials by the jats if you go to uttar pradesh thakurs they won't accept food from the brahmins actually as per the vedas brahmins are given the superior status but they exhibit more concern for their social superiority you go to punjab jats will consider the brahmins as menials menials means the workers low paid workers thagurs they don't accept even food or water from the brahmins if you go to karnataka in any temple the priests brahmanic priests allows the vakkaligas brahmins allow the vakkaligas to have harati first before others have it if the brahmins give harati to other people then he cannot continue his profession he cannot survive harati must be given that means the sacred fire after after performing puja to the god the sacred fire will be there that is called harati the harati must be given to the vakkaligas first before others have it that's why the dominant caste people exhibit more concern for their social superiority rather than their ritual superiority they want more importance and the dominant caste acts as a model for sanitization they exhibit more concern for social superiority second one is uh, they act as a model for sanitization just listen you need not to write in the exam for the cultural change in our society three major processes have taken place they are sanitization second one is westernization and the third one is modernization this is the indigenous process that means originated within india westernization process the change in the lifestyle because of the contact with the western countries 
modernization, the change in the life because of the introduction of uh, the elements of science and technology into our life. Because of uh, these uh, three processes, some changes have taken place in our life, social life or cultural life. Sanitization means this was the indigenous process, westernization, modernization are the recent processes which are responsible for social cultural change. But uh, sanitization was the indigenous process and it was responsible for social cultural change uh, from the ancient times uh, onwards. What is meant by sanitization? Here, generally, if there are no restrictions, if there are no restraints, then everyone wants to become CM or PM or President of America. Am I correct or not? Definitely. Why? Because in that status, they will be given number of privileges, lot of respect, number of immunities. Like that, uh, number of privileges will be there. That is the present day society. In the olden days, Brahmins are given, were given uh, number of privileges and on the lower caste, uh, number of disabilities were imposed. That's why the lower caste always uh, will have the desire to enjoy the privileges of the upper caste. That's why they would like to get the membership in the higher caste. But I told you that previously in membership in a particular caste is by birth only. Then our people, uh, they introduced one process by name sanitization. In sanitization process, the lower caste people imitate uh, the lifestyle of the upper caste gradually over a period of time. It may be one generation, it may be two generations, it may be three generations, four generations. Uh, that to one characteristic at one point of time. Like that, uh, the gradual imitation of the lifestyle of the upper caste by the lower caste uh, in order to be accepted as the members of the upper caste is called as sanitization. I can imitate the lifestyle of the Brahmins gradually over a period of time. Then that is called a Brahmanic model of sanitization. I can imitate the lifestyle of the Kshatriya, then that is called Kshatriya model of sanitization. I can imitate the lifestyle of the Vaishyas, Vaishya model of sanitization. I can imitate the lifestyle of the Shudras, then that is called Shudra model of sanitization. Who will follow the Shudra model of sanitization? The Shudra model of sanitization was followed by the untouchables. Please remember that uh, Shudras are not untouchables, they are different categories. Listen here. This is only for your understanding, a background information. In our Asian Indian society, endogamy was followed very strictly. That means Brahmins can marry Brahmins. Kshatriyas, they have to marry Kshatriyas, Vaishyas have to marry Vaishyas, Shudras have to marry Shudras. Now, I told you previously also, all the ancient literature was male centric. Here we will come across two terms. Already, already we, have, we have come across one term, endogamy. And apart from endogamy, we will come across two more terms, hypergamy. and hypogamy. I told you the ancient literature was male centric. Here hypergamy means male belongs to higher category. Hypogamy means male belongs to lower category. Hyper means high. Hypo means low. Male belongs to higher category. That means in any marriage 
if the male belongs to higher category that means uh, if the male belongs to higher category and the female belongs to lower category then that is called uh, hypergamous marriage that means a brahmin can marry a kshatriya female and uh, he can marry a vaishya female he can marry a shudra female here the first one is endogamy and uh, the remaining things are hypergamous marriages male belong to higher category that is the privilege given to brahmin he can marry any female because he belongs to highest category the, that's why hypergamy was allowed in the olden society or that means in the ancient indian society that's why that is also called anuloma marriage acceptable marriage but if the male belongs to lower category the type of marriage was not at all allowed in the olden days that's why the hypogamy is also called Pratiloma marriage. Pratiloma marriage. This is not accepted. Now consider Kshatriya. A Kshatriya male can marry a Vaishya female, he can marry a Shudra female apart from marrying a Kshatriya female. Vaishya can marry a Vaishya female, a Shudra female. That means for the males, uh, there will be more options. Uh, whenever we are moving from lower level to higher levels brahmins he has the option of selecting a mate from four groups kshatriyas from three groups vaishyas from two groups and shudras from one group i told you in the previous class brahmins kshatriyas and vaishyas they are called as dvijas twice born castes why because they were allowed to they were, they were allowed to have education and that is considered as second birth. To recognize the second birth, uh, they were allowed, they, they will wear uh, one sacred thread in a ceremony by name, Upanayana ceremony. Previously, we have discussed. All those people who do not wear the sacred thread, uh, they come under the category of Shudras. Actually, India was conquered by Aryans. The Aryans, after conquering the native people, they made the native people as their servants. They were given unclean occupations. They were nothing but Shudras. Shudras were the indigenous people or the native people of India. And the Brahmin, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, they were the Aryans who came to India and um, who started pursuing the clean occupations. But based on the occupations, again, they were divided into three categories. Now, in ancient India, we have three types of marriages, endogamous marriage, hypergamous marriage and hypogamous marriage. Endogamy, there were no restrictions. Hypergamous marriages, they were allowed. Hypogamous marriages were not allowed. If there is any hypogamous marriage, the children born to that hypogamous marriage are not given they were not given any recognition in the society they were considered as chandalas chandalas means untouchables that's why the another category is untouchables the present day sc is generally scheduled caste the so called scheduled caste are considered as the untouchables in the present day indian society and many other castes, Yadavas, Reddis, Chaudharis, all those people come under the category of Shudras only. Definitely, they do not belong to this Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya category. Um, but, and at the same time, they are not untouchables. They belong to Shudra category. The children born to this uh, hypogamous marriage are considered as untouchables. That's why these untouchables, uh, in order to elevate their status, uh, they follow the Shudra model of sanitization. That's why we have four models of sanitization. We'll discuss in detail later. Now, here, in order to enjoy the privileges of uh, the upper caste, and in order to avoid the disabilities, uh, the lower caste people started imitating the lifestyle of the upper caste. That process uh, is nothing but sanitization. Many lower caste people imitated the lifestyle of the upper caste people. 
most of the times so the dominant caste serves as a model for sanitization if brahmins are dominant in a particular caste in a particular region the lower caste people would like to follow the brahmanic model of sanitization if kshatriyas are dominant in a particular region then the lower caste people would like to follow the kshatriya model of sanitization like that the dominant caste acts as a model for sanitization after that the dominant caste can impose a number of restrictions and they can maintain social distance among number of castes the dominant caste they can impose and they can maintain social restrictions in many textbooks uh, the same point uh, was mentioned in a different way dominant caste acts as a watchdog of culture or protector of culture why because they can impose restrictions and they can maintain the restrictions because of their numerical preponderance economic and political power and a bureaucratic power in 1930s in tamil nadu there was a dominant caste by name kallar community in the ramnad district in the tamil nadu there was a district by name ramnad district in that district kallars was the dominant community and in the same district the untouchables they revolted against the kallar community then the kallar community got lot of angry they were decisively dominant they were numerically preponderant economically politically even the bureaucracy also they have representation they attacked the untouchables they are also called as adi dravidians at that point of time they attacked those people and uh, the adi dravidians were beaten up and uh, their houses were torched and finally they were made to subordinate uh, to the kallar community then they imposed a number of restrictions the lower caste people that means the harijans are untouchables they should not crop their hair the men should not bear clothes above the level of waist even the vests and coats should also not be used and they should not use this metallic plates for eating food they should eat food only in earthen made plates and pots they should use females also they should not cover upper part of the body in front of the higher caste they should not use flowers in their locks they should not apply sandal paste to their body they should not wear chappals like that number of restrictions were imposed and they were maintained because of their preponderant numerical economy numerical strength preponderant economic and political power they were able to maintain those social restrictions that means um, the traditions were maintained as such uh, by the dominant caste that's why some people used to consider dominant caste as a protector or watchdog of the culture but as far as my opinion is concerned we can use this sentence dominant caste can impose and maintain a number of social restrictions and apart from those things dominant caste secures economic benefits economic benefits to all the members of the particular caste whenever a particular caste reaches the power positions people feel that uh, our caste people are there in the cm position or other ministerial positions 
and uh, they, they generally they expect uh, some sort of help. Uh, they will expect some sort of help from those people. They will also provide help along the caste lines. Uh, even today also we can see the ministers, MLAs, they are providing help to other members uh, on the basis of caste. That's why according to MNC Inverse, the dominant caste secures economic benefits uh, to the members of that particular caste. And uh, dominant caste monopolizes uh, the important administrative offices. Especially the ward members and uh, the sarpanch. These are the important administrative offices. These important ad administrative offices were almost monopolized by the upper caste people. Even after the introduction of reservation in the Panchayat Raj institutions, we came across a proxy system. Only those people who were considered as the proxies of the upper caste people were allowed to nominate, were, were allowed to file the nominations, were allowed to contest the elections. That means the real power will be in the hands of upper caste people only. In the recent past, uh, the equations have been changing, but uh, have changed and have been changing, but in the olden days it is not so. The important administrative offices were monopolized by the upper caste. And uh, they can influence uh, the decisions of uh, the panchayats. Are uh, village council decisions. Why? Because uh, the uh, the elders of all the important castes will form the village council or village panchayat, but the headman is always from the higher caste or dominant caste. And at the same time, they can influence uh, the decisions of uh, the caste councils. Every caste will have its own caste council to settle the disputes among the members of uh, that particular caste. But in that particular village, say for example, consider me, I may be belonging to one dominant caste. I may have some friends in some other caste. Whenever they are involved in a particular dispute, whenever that dispute is brought to the notice of that particular caste council, I can influence uh, the decision of that particular caste council. Because I am from dominant caste and I can influence uh, the elders of the particular caste council. That's why the dominant caste can influence uh, the decisions of village councils or village panchayats and at the same time it can influence the decisions of other caste councils. Apart from those things, uh, the dominant caste people generally in some areas uh, we can come across uh, they tend to pay the lower wages. If there is any resentment the lower caste people were beaten by the dominant caste people and uh, that means uh, beating Especially the women of the lower caste were enjoyed by the upper caste people. That means their sexual desires were gratified with the lower caste people. Those people cannot do anything against these people because they belong to dominant caste. Economically they are powerful, politically they are powerful, numerically they are powerful, even bureaucracy also they have representation. So there will not be any choice for the women of the lower caste to raise their voice against their sexual harassment, against their sexual exploitation. In all these areas we can come across the influence. The dominant caste exhibits more concern for social superiority and it acts as a model for sanitization. It can impose and maintain the social restrictions. It secures economic benefits to its members or followers 
it monopolizes the important administrative offices, it influences the decisions of uh, the village council or village panchayats and uh, the other caste councils and uh, it tends to pay the lower caste people with uh, low wages and uh, they beat the lower caste people and they gratify their sexual desires with the women of the lower caste people. Apart from these things, uh, they patronize the poor. Whenever there is any problem, whenever there is any function, marriage, in times of need, uh, the upper caste people provide lot of help to the lower caste people also. The people who provide lot of help, they can be considered as patrons. The biggest pattern in a particular village is almost always from the dominant caste. These are the areas of influence of a dominant caste.